So I've saved this, so I'm going to go ahead and say File, New Project. Now when I do this, um, my other project disappears. However, it is still open. And the way that you can switch from one project to another quickly is if you go up to the Window menu option at the top of the screen, um, you'll see I actually have several projects open, but you'll see I have Untitled 6, which is my current one, and then Tower. right? And so if I click on Tower, it'll jump me back there. If I go back to Untitled 6, it'll jump me to this scene. This is a good point to stop and take a bathroom break, whatever you need to do. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and create a cylinder. Now, we know that the cylinder is going to need to be reasonably small. We set our diameter on, or our radius to 1 for the railing. And so we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to set our radius on the cylinder to 1. And then the height, I'm going to set it to 5 centimeters. And you'll see it's really tiny in the center of the scene. So now if I go and I hit the letter S, right, it's going to make it look like the cylinder is a lot bigger, but actually it's just zoom the camera in so that I'm focused on the cylinder. I'm actually going to back out just a little bit from this because something is going to happen here in just a second. So in order to make multiple copies of an object quickly, there's a generator called um, the ar called array. And there's a couple different ways you can get to that generator. So first you can go to create generator and then you just come down here until you find array and you click array. The other way to get to several of the generators is um, under this object which is called a subdivision surface which we'll talk about later but if I click and hold you'll see that all of these generators are available here and we're actually today we're going to be using the array and we're going to be using the bool as well and an atom array. So let's go ahead and go to array. Now when I do that nothing happens except an array has been created in our hierarchy. In order for an array to affect an object and to make copies of it, we need to make that object a child of the array. And to do that, we select the object that we want to be a child, we click on it, and we hover over the array. And you'll notice that there's arrows that point in or over. If it's pointed towards the side, it basically means it's just going to change the order of what objects where. If the arrow points down, it means it's going to make it a child of the array. So I'm going to make it a child. As soon as I do that, if I come back to my scene, you'll see I can kind of see this orange outline, but I don't see my cylinder. But if I zoom out um, a little bit more, you can see that there are cylinders spaced really far apart from each other in a circle around the center point. And so if I click on the array object in my hierarchy and I come down here, you'll see that in my object properties here, I've got the radius, I've got the number of copies, and then we have amplitude, frequency, and array frequency. We're not going to worry about the bottom three today, but basically what they do is they kind of allow your objects to be aligned in a circle, but then on like a sine wave that goes around the circle, right? So some of them are higher up, some of them are lower down um, alo along that radius. And so what we're going to do is we're going to shrink, first we're going to shrink our radius. We know that we made the radius of the railing um, 63. So we're going to set this radius to 63 as well. And then instead of seven copies, right, we talked about doing 36 copies. So let's do 36 copies. Right. So now we've got this. Now the reason I had you create, and let me go ahead and hit S. The reason I had you create a separate scene to do this is once you start modeling a bunch of stuff, um, it all gets in the way because everything is created around the origin. And if you're creating objects and moving them off the origin, um, sometimes that can cause weird things to happen, especially with generators and child objects. And so it's easiest just to create a new scene, create the objects you need. Um, and I'm going to call this railing support. So I'm going to double click on the array name and just call it railing support. And once I've done that, 
Um, all I need to do to get this into the other scene is hit Command or Control C, depending on which operating system you're on, to copy it. And then I go back up to Window. I go down to Tower, my other file. And I hit Command or Control V to paste it. And now that railing support object should be in my scene. And if I hit the letter H to frame all my objects, then I can see this, I can click and drag, and I can pull this up and basically align it, right? I want to make sure that um, if I zoom in, right, that this top edge is intersecting this bottom edge, and it looks like it might be a little bit further out than I would like it to be. And also, I might want these to be a little bit thinner in diameter. And so to make those changes, now that I've made most of the big changes, I make sure I have my railing support selected, and maybe I make my radius 62.5 instead. Right, so that nudges them in, and you can see now they're, right, now they're, um, oh, oops. Oh, so something I just did is I had hit tab, and so I had the number of copies in there, and then when I went to move things, it made it so there's only three copies. This is one of the things that does annoy me about Cinema 4D, so I'm gonna do that. And now if I just click off, there's nothing highlighted, right? So I can just click in the gray here um, to set those to 36. So now, if I rotate this view again a little bit, you can kind of see, well now it's like offset a little bit on the inside. Um, I could do say 62.75, and then it looks like it's a little bit more centered between those two, two sides, right? And there's still this little lit edge here, which if we were to light this, we might get a weird shadow. So I am going to click on my cylinder that makes up the railing support. And I'm going to set my radius to 0 0.75. All right, so they're a little bit narrower. They should fit nicely within the thing. And now you can see they're also a little bit too short. Um, because I did the same thing again where I hit tab and then hit the number three to rotate and it set it to three. So I'm going to set that back to five and that should be plenty tall enough um, to work. Okay, so if I hit the letter H, we can zoom back out, right? And so now we've got, we've learned how to use um, several different primitives and um, also the generator, the array generator, to generate an array. Um, the last few things that need to happen are going to be to create this top section of the tower and to um, make some, we're just gonna make some basic cutouts into the, the bottom of this object as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause and stop this video and then continue the next section.